Section 3.3 talks about measures of relative standing and box plots. Whoa. So, measure measures of relative standing. This is a quick way of figuring out how far a score is from the average. Definition of a z-score. Z-score is something we're going to be using for a while. A z-score is the number of standard deviations that a given value x is above or below the mean. Do remember, there is the mean. A mean plus a standard deviation and a mean minus standard deviation. A mean plus two standard deviations and a mean minus two standard deviations we consider those to be normal anything above is too high and anything below is too low so to get these values so think of it this way if i was looking as a test if i consider the median or the middle to be a c the average then if you add a standard deviation and subtract a standard deviation, that would stand for all the C range students. If you add another standard deviation, that's the B range. And if a number scores more than two standard deviations above the mean, those are the exceptions. Now, if you go between one and two standard deviations, those are the D. And below two standard deviations, those are grade wise those are the grades that scored extremely low and therefore earn an F so to be able to figure out whose score goes where I need to do all of these calculations this is what they did a Z score is the number of standard deviations that a given value is above or below the mean what they did if you're talking about a Z score a z-score takes the average and force that to be zero and a standard deviation of one and a standard deviation of two a standard deviation of negative one and a standard deviation of a negative two you give me a score I'll tell you what the z-score is I'll tell you where does that lie on this scale this scale stands for standard deviations so any number between any z-score between 0 and 1 that means you are in that range if it's positive and if it's negative it means you are in that range if you have any number between 1 and 2 any number between 1 and 2 z-score between 1 and 2 that means you're right there 1.3 1.4 you're right there 2.1 you just jump to the exception similarly on the negative side if you let if you have a z-score of negative 1.3 that means you're right there any score below 2 negative 2 that is that means you're in the f range we always round a z-score to do that some places and this is the formula of finding the z-score you take the z-score that you're measuring you, you take the x, the value that you're measuring, you subtract the average from it, and divide it by the standard deviation. For a sample, for a population, you subtract the mean, which is the population mean, and you divide by the standard deviation. That tells you that x, based on this scale, where does it lie? So, if you're not fully getting this, that's okay. We're going to be working with this for a couple of chapters. So the z-score is a standard value that describes a data's value relative values relative standing. A negative z-score corresponds to a data below the average. So everything's about the average. We take the average to be zero when we're talking about a z-score. And each standard deviation is one. And a z-score takes any value, any measurement or data that you want, put it in the z and it tells you where does that fit in by simply giving you a number between normally negative 3 and positive 3. It could go above 3 and below negative 3, 
but those are exceptionally higher exception here. Unusual data values are more than two standard deviations away from the mean. So the usual is between negative 2 and 2. Why is that? Because it means you are within two standard deviations above or below. Unusual data, if you get a z-score that's bigger than 2 or less than negative 2, those are exceptionally high, those are exceptionally low, kind of like the A's and the F's that we mentioned. The z-score allows us to compare data values from different samples or populations. Instead of taking three different classes and figuring out the average for each class and the standard deviation and making all of that chart to figure out who gets an A, who gets a B, who gets a C if there's a curve, I could figure out the z-score of all the students and then I could compare them apples to apples very easy. And let's play with that a bit. Two college roommates are taking different physics classes at a university. They agreed to a wager regarding their midterm scores whereby the loser must do the dishes for a month after scoring an 82 jacob insists that michael lost since he earned a 70 on his exam but they're taking different exams however michael argues that he performed better relative to the rest of his class than jacob did use the given class results to determine who won the bet. There are two options you could do. You could do this the long way and you could do this the short way. This really shortcut Jacob's class. This is the long way. Average 68. Add a standard deviation that's 84. Add another standard deviation that's 90. And you notice Jacob's score was an 82. So Jacob in his class, since those are curved, 72 Jacob the 82 in his class earns him a C while in Michael's class 55 if you add a standard deviation that is 67 add another 12 that is 79 you notice a score of 70 falls in the B range this is the C this is the B Michael earned a B and Jacob earned a C. Instead of doing what I just did, I could say, well, instead of doing all of this work, hey, let's find the Z-score for Jacob and remember what it is. It's right there. X minus the average divided by the standard deviation. So we take X, which is a score of 82, minus the average divided by a standard deviation of 6. Plug that in your calculator. And that tells you his score is 0 0.67. Remember, those are the C ranges, right? The B is right there, and the A is right there. Versus, if I take Michael and I figure out his Z score, I'll take his 70 score minus 55 divided by 12. That tells me he gets a 1.25, which means, remember, that's the most, that's the C's. 1.25 he's in the B range so a Z score is a lot more a lot faster and I could compare scores from different populations compared to how they did based on their scores percentiles that's a different story so Z score we're going to come back to heavily we're going to take a detour really quick and get into percentiles percentiles are really percentages and the way it works, the definition, percentiles denoted by P sub K are measures of locations and relative to all the other data values. It has its own use. L is the locator that gives the rank of a value. And P sub K is the kth percentile. Percentile is nothing more than a percent but I'll tell you why it's called percentile and what's so good about it. Finding a percentile associated with a given score, there's a formula, the percentile score. You take the total number of scores less than the given score divided by the total number of scores. 
So, what percentile does, it tells you. If you say the 30th percentile, that tells you 30% of the measurements or the data were below this number you're going to get. So, if I say the 30th percentile was 40, that means 30% of the students scored below 40. So, if you have a score of 30th percentile, if your score is the 30th percentile, that means you did better than 30% of the class.